today I am going to be sharing my red eye tree frog painting and giving you guys an update on my own red eye tree frogs. Before we get started on this acrylic painting, if you are interested in information and updates on my red eye tree frogs, if you've been following along with their story on my live streams, I will be sharing some video footage of them and what's been going on with them in addition to the vivarium that they eventually, hopefully, will be going into. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where the real-time version of this lesson is available for you now. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my weekly, longer, one to sometimes three hour long tutorials. As soon as you sign up, you get access to over 200 that are currently available in addition to that new video every single week. I've got multiple mediums available for you. And if you head over to my Patreon video library, link will be in the video description, just for taking a look at what's available, I do have a free colored pencil demonstration over there so you can see if you think Patreon may be a fit for you. For this one, I'm working on an 8x10 Fredericks Nature Core canvas board. These are super smooth, and just for transparency, I am sponsored by Fredericks. They did provide me with this canvas. These canvases are great because they are so, so, so smooth. So when you're trying to get that smooth blending, or in this case, I'm doing a bit of airbrushing here, when you really want that smooth, smooth look for the fine detail for blending, for airbrushing, you wanna go with a canvas that has a very smooth surface. If you go with one that is very rough, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to get those little details because the paint just kinda of sticks to the top of the tooth of the canvas. So anyway, moral of that story, pick something that is very, very smooth. And this one really is. This one's kind of similar to a watercolor canvas board as far as how smooth it is. So I'm using just white airbrush paint first. Well, I used a bit of black. Now I'm using the white airbrush paint to get some of these little dots building up some of this texture. I tried using a cream tone, but mine was a little bit too translucent. So in order to get it to really show up here, I just painted it white and then I'm airbrushing color on top. So that would be the equivalent of doing a glaze. Now for this background, it doesn't need to be airbrushed, but my gosh, does it save time. Now, if you've been afraid of using airbrushes, don't worry, this type of look for blurry backgrounds, it's one of the easiest things you can do, like crazy easy. Uh, trying to get the fine detail with airbrushing, that can be a bit more, well, it definitely is more of a challenge. But when you're going for that blurry out of focus background, that's really, really a very simple thing to do with an airbrush. So now I'm going to go ahead and paint in the bromeliad. I'm using some magentas. I've got a really bright, that one is called Brilliant Yellow Green. It's a fairly opaque green too, so I'm not having to add a lot of white to it to make it really stand out against the darker colors. So this particular little frog has never actually seen this bromeliad. This came, it's in his future vivarium, but he's been fairly ill, which we'll talk about at the end of the video. So he's not made it out of quarantine and into this tank. So I had to do a little bit of photoshopping to take the photo I had taken of him in his quarantine tank and stick him on one of his future plants. Don't worry, he's doing great now. So he, he should make it into that tank. And the brushes that I'm using here, these are Taclon Bristled Filberts. I've got a couple of different brands, mostly Simply Simmons and then the Master Touch brand, brand brushes. Master Touch are the Hobby Lobby generic brush. Simply Simmons, I know Michaels carries a lot. They have a huge selection of the Simply Simmons brand. You can get them online too. But really any Taclon Bristled Filbert is going to work fine for me. It's a really good, I guess, stiffness for painting with acrylics. I don't want something too stiff, I don't want something too soft, so it's just a nice in-between. So we've got a nice bright lime green here. I did have to mix a little bit of white in with it so it would stand up against the dark colors. Remember when you mix white in with your paint, it will make it more opaque so it will stand out more, but it will also make that color more pastel. So like in this case with that violet, if I'm adding the white to it, that's where I get that lighter pink. Now, if you don't want pink, but you still need it to, it's not standing out, you put the violet on and it just, it looks too dark, put white down first and then when it dries, go ahead and glaze the color you want on top. And by glaze, what I mean is thin the paint down a little bit with water so that it's some semi-translucent. The more water you add, the lighter that color will be, but you can tint the color that way, or you just paint it straight on fairly thick. It'll still show up a lot better that way than when you paint, tried painting that violet over a darker background. 
or whatever color, anytime you want to lighten it up. Add your opaque color, so in this case the titanium white, and just when it dries, put the color you really want it to be on top. So now we'll go ahead and block in the little frog. I'm going to create some texture on his skin. So I'm just starting by using Hooker's Green. A little bit of yellow and white there for the highlighted areas. This is still a Taclon bristled filbert, a fairly small one. Using a synthetic hog hair liner brush to get the smaller details. So you've got his little mouth. And I'll do a lot of dots. Dots are, are I'm a huge fan for dots for creating texture in things. And so what I will do when I start with these dots, I'm going to overdo it intentionally, put way more than what I want to be there. That way when I glaze the color I really want over it, these will just be much more subtle, just showing through the glazed color that goes on top. And the big thing when you're painting, especially with acrylics, this is a layering process. This is not paint by number. So don't expect your first few brush strokes to look perfect. They're not going to, they shouldn't. You're just going to keep layering until it looks good. So when you have a few layers where you're like, wow, I'm doing a terrible job. This does not look good. It's not blended as smooth as I want or the details, not, whatever it is, don't worry about it. Keep layering until it looks how you want. One of the biggest problems I see with, with newer artists especially is they will complain that they're not happy with the results that they're getting and they'll show want to critique on that painting. And it's like, well, the painting's not bad. It's just not done yet. A lot of people will get about a quarter of the way what I would consider a quarter of the way through the painting and then they just stop and they call it done, whether it's because they don't know where to go from there or they're afraid they're going to mess it up. Don't do that. Just keep layering until it looks good. And with acrylics especially, you don't, you're not really limited on how many layers you can get. Just keep throwing paint on top until you get it how you like. So I'm going to go ahead and keep on with the little dots here, creating that shiny texture. I'm not going to leave them straight white like this. We will glaze over that. Especially with him because I do want him to look shiny. Dots are a perfect way to go. Another thing to point out, the eyes, where I wanted them to be really, really red, I didn't just take red paint and paint fill that area in. They wouldn't have stand, stood out enough. I had to paint them white first, and then once that dried, I could put the red on top, and that let me have bright, bright red eyes. But if I tried just with red, it would have been really dull. I barely would have tinted the color. They wouldn't have come, they, it, they wouldn't have looked like that. A little bit of shading there on the feet. And a lot of the shading that I'm doing here, this is a mixture of my violet and my black. So I've got a nice deep plum. That is the color that I'm using for shading the orange on the feet and for the body. Some more highlights there. Remember, as you're painting, the harder you push with the brush, the thicker your brush stroke is going to be. If you want really teeny, 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 tiny detail, don't push hard with that brush. That is way too yellow and looks terrible. So I'm gonna go over it with a more bluish green, which looked much better. And you're going to have layers like that where you do something you're like, wow, that wasn't a good choice. It's not a big deal. Don't panic. Don't feel like you've ruined anything. You weren't done yet anyway. Just keep layering over it until it looks better. But I had that quick little phase where I glazed too much yellow and it, was, it wasn't it was cute. It was, it was not good. So we just I used an aqua tone over it, toned it right down, fixed it up, and only you get, well, I guess everybody who sees this knows I had that really bad layer. But the average person is not gonna look at this and go, oh, you had a bad layer under there. So it's nothing to panic about. You're just gonna layer on top until you like the results that you get. A little detail around the eyes, cleaning up the edges. Make sure your edges are nice and clean. We don't want fuzzy, bumpy edges. I don't want a fluffy looking frog. As I say that, I'm thinking actually a fluffy frog would be kind of cute, but not accurate in this case. Abominable snow frog. I don't think I said that right. Some more shading there using the violet for my shadows. Don't always jump to black as being the color that you use for your shadows. Purples, violets, blues, you've got a lot of options there that in many cases will look much, much better than just jumping straight to black as your shadow. Get some highlights on the eyes, a few more highlights on the toes there. Using my green just around the edges of the bromeliad. And 
And look how many layers it took for me to get the frog to be how I wanted him to. It wasn't just paint him the right color. That doesn't work real well. You don't get the same results. There were many, many layers. So it wasn't even a matter of, well, which color do you use? That's a common question that people ask. Well, I just need to know what color you're using. I used like 30 different colors there because I was mixing a bunch. Well, I probably only had maybe less than 10 colors on my palette, but I was mixing a whole lot. It's never about just picking the right color. It's your values. Are your darks dark enough? Your lights light enough? Now, in the earlier on, you saw where that yellow didn't look very good. I was not thrilled about that. So I painted over it. So there are times when you're just not going to like a color that you've done. No big deal. Paint over it. But for the most part, the main thing that we're focusing on are our values. Dark's dark enough. Light's light enough. That is what's going to make the biggest difference in your work and making it look realistic. Picking the absolute perfect color it's not as big of a deal as we want to make it out to be. We're just always remember, get those darks dark enough, lights light enough, and that is what is going to make your work look more realistic. And again, if you are looking for a real-time version of this painting, head over to patreon.com slash I've been sharing my little baby red-eyed tree frogs quite a bit on Instagram and Facebook and MeWe. I want to kind of share some of the positive and negatives, the pros and cons, because I know a lot of people see them and think, oh my gosh, they're so adorable, which seriously, look at that face, cutest little baby frog ever. But there have been some serious challenges, and I think that people need to be aware of that because I know a lot of people do the whole, oh, my son would like frogs or my daughter would like, like a frog. This is probably not the easiest species by any stretch of the imagination to go with. There are definitely species that are more tolerable of different variables. Um, these guys are a challenge. So I wanted to share some of that with you just so you kind of know what you're getting into if you are looking at frogs. So this is their quarantine tank. They've been in it for a month. They will be in it for several more months. I'm also using it as a sort of grow out because they are very tiny and the tank that I'm going to be moving them into is huge. But I need to be able to closely monitor and make sure that they're thriving and doing well. When I first got them, mine had a pro protozoa, which is kind of like a parasite, and it killed two of them uh, before the vet was able to save them. So I got them to a vet. I've spent far more in vet bills than on the frogs themselves. And the reason I put that out there is so you realize the initial investment is not just the... It's not just getting the frogs, getting a tank set up. You've got to keep in mind that these guys are prone to parasites. They're very, very sen sensitive, whereas another type or another species of frog, let's say a white's tree frog, while the, yes, they get parasites too, they handle them better. As it turns out, these guys, the red-eyed tree frogs, they don't handle parasites well at all. They're more affected by anything like that. Very, very, very sensitive. So that is something that you just need to be aware of before you get involved. So this is their, again, their 10 gallon aquarium that they're in. It's in my bedroom so I can have them disturbed as little as possible. At night, it's completely black in there. They are nocturnal. That's another thing that you want to be aware of. I don't see them in the day. They fold up into their little omelet shape on their leaves and that's how they sleep all day long. So the way that I watch them, I put up a security camera that has that night vision type look and I watch them during the night that way so they're not being disturbed by me. You know, they're babies so they are going to be even more sensitive but they're... This is what I see during the day. So if you're looking for an active frog that you're going to see during the day, this is this is not the frog for you. Uh, dart frogs are a good one. Those guys are awake during the day. So there are good options out there. But again, I'm kind of throwing out some of the negatives that you want to be aware of before you jump into this one. Now, once these guys, the vet clears them, everything's healthy, this, and they get a little bit larger, this is the vivarium that they will eventually move into. It's the equivalent of, of about, I wanna say 67 gallons, if you were to translate this into an aquarium. There's two plants down in their bowl. Those won't be there. Those are just there temporarily till another tank I'm working on gets set up. But anyway, this is the setup. They've got some nice alocasia, uh, bromeliads, they've got an orchid in there, a lot of big leafed, plants that they'll enjoy sitting on and climbing on. I want them to have as natural of a setup as possible. So that is where they will go. And luckily I had done enough research before I, I said I got them that I didn't just get them home and put them directly into this tank. I am so grateful I didn't because if I would have done that, I would have infected this tank with all of those plants. It would have been a bit of a nightmare with the protozoa that they have. It's flagellates. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I can almost guarantee I'm not. But that is the setup that they are going to eventually go into. Originally, I thought I wanted three or four frogs. 
honestly, at this point, if these two continue doing as they're both eating great, everything looks great so far. If these two do well, I would be perfectly happy with them. Just these two in this tank. I think this tank is going to be a wonderful, wonderful home for them. And I can't wait to, to let them go explore it, but we've got to wait a bit. But this tank, it's, it's, so even on its own, it is absolutely beautiful. I enjoy it so, so much. So it'll be even better with little sleeping frogs that are the shape of an almond during the day. And again, I'm not going to see them during the day. I only really see them on the security night cam that I put on them. And the night cam has been a lot of fun. I watch, this is what I spend my night. I have this up, pulled up on my phone all the time while I'm painting or whatever else. And I can keep an eye on who's eating, how much they're eating, all of that. You've got this guy. He's going to have a cricket fail there. Yeah, he missed. He did not, that cricket just ran off. Totally missed. Don't worry. A few minutes later, he did catch his cricket. These guys are fairly clumsy. Here he goes, going for it. There he goes. And then some frog yoga afterwards. It's funny because the dart frogs seem to have a lot more control of themselves. These guys are just like, we're weird little rubber noodle things. Um, but there, and I don't know why he's stretching like that after, but this is, again, this is how I spend most of my night. Well, don't, I don't just watch them. I'm, I'm working at the time, but it has been fun. So I don't want to make it sound like it's, it's too much work and not worth it. It absolutely is. I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, being responsible and making sure everyone knows it's not all rainbows and Skittles or I don't know what goes with rainbows, but there are definitely, there have been some challenges and a lot of worrying about, are they eating? Are they sick? Are they, all of that on top of, of course, the vet bills. So anyway, I just wanted to share them. So far, these two have been, the last few days have been doing wonderful. They're done with their medication. It was an oral medication. That wasn't fun, trying to force feed, feed a, or get a frog to open its mouth that's that tiny. It wasn't fun. I thought about filming it to show the ridiculousness of how hard it was to do, and but I didn't, I wanted to make it as less, as remove as much stress as possible from the situation for the frogs. So I decided not to bother with cameras and such and trying to get them on camera or whatever. So I don't have any footage of that. Let me just tell you though, not fun. And yeah, that is basically what it's been like with them so far. I've had them for, I want to say a month, a month and a half now. And I thank God these two are doing well. Fingers crossed. Everybody send good wishes that this continues. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Well, sort of. Facebook, or no, this isn't Facebook, this is YouTube. Either way, they don't notify you that much. You may also want to hit the bell icon and get notifications that way as well. If you're still not getting notifications, sign up for my email newsletter. I send out a email once a week letting you know whatever live streams are going to go up and what videos went up that week.